How y'all doing, folks? Welcome to this week's edition of the Outdoors Bound Podcast. I'm George North. Thanks for being with us. Fishing's picking up all around the region, getting good reports of stripers, bass, walleye, and crappies being caught. The VDWR's trout stocking program's also going strong. The Roanoke River Salem got fish last week. Remember, Trout Heritage Day is coming up on April 6th. There we go. Big news concerning striped bass at Smith Mountain Lake. DWR biologist Dan Wilson talked with the Smith Mountain Lake Striper Club last Friday night. We're increasing the stocking from last year, but it's still a little bit below our 20-year average. It's somewhere in between. And, and last year was because you saw a reduction in growth that correlated to a uh, reduction in, in uh, forage. You're still not seeing the forage bounce back, but... You're, you're going to increase these numbers primarily just to keep there from being a gap in, in recruitment. Correct. We, I'm trying to prevent uh, a major hole in the fishery developing three, four, five years down the road by kind of tapering and reduced stocking until the growth gets back to where it should be. We've still got a quality fishery here. Yes. The other big news out of that meeting is that a catch and release mortality study is going to be conducted on SML to find out how many stripers die after being released. That could help the DWR manage the resource better and, depending on what that research finds, could even change regulations specific to the lake. We'll keep you updated on that. If you wanted to take in a fishing or outdoors show in the past, you had to drive to Richmond or Greensboro. Next year, you only have to drive over to the Berglund Center. Looks like the Star City Fishing Expo is going to happen next February. It's being put together by event organizer Jason Lane. I had a chance to talk with him. So February 7th, 8th, and 9th here at the Berglund Center next year, uh, we've got a um, great lineup of vendors that's already wanting to sign up for the show. Very excited about it. Um, you know, I've got some local help, some local pros here and uh, that live around the Roanoke area that's helping me get some of these pros to come in and do the exhibits. And um, I'm not an amateur at doing uh, these type of shows. I do craft and vendor shows here at the Berglund Center twice a year. So this is another spin off of uh, the Savvy Events craft and vendor shows. We're going to do a fishing expo here in the Roanoke Valley. I'm very excited because I believe that we have the uh, potential to, to, to have a huge show here. Uh, we've got room for ex, uh, expansion here, not just only in the Special Events Center, but we can also take it down in the exhibit hall or maybe outside in the parking lot, but I'm looking uh, forward to this. There's obviously a lot of interest. Do you have anybody already asking about how they can exhibit here? Yeah, I do. I have a lot of interest already. I've had a, have an Instagram page, it's uh, Star City Fishing Expo, and I have a Facebook page, uh, Star City Fishing Expo. We're working on a um, website that should be up this week, so we'll start taking vendors for that. If you wanted to go to a fishing show before this, you had to go to Greensboro or Richmond. Right, yeah, so we're, we're, you know, three and a half hours drive, you know, to go to Richmond or Greensboro or, you know, wherever it may be. So we're going to have one here that, you know, people from around the surrounding areas won't have to drive so far. You know, we want the families to come out and to enjoy this. And, you know, we want it to be affordable for the families to be able to bring their kids out and enjoy it. We're going to have a trout fishing pond for the kids so they can come out, you know, um, go trout fishing while we're here and listen to um, some, some pros talk about how they catch the big the big fish. So um, that's what we want to do. We want to be the big fish for the Roanoke Valley. We want to actually come out and come out and be strong and um, show, show what we have to offer in the Roanoke Valley because we've got a beautiful place that we live in. The Star City Fishing Expo is still coming together, but it's going to happen next February 7th through 9th. I'll keep you in the loop on that. Now, a prime spring fishery is the James River, and the target species is smallmouth bass. You can catch some pre-spawn giants this time of year. I've had the chance to fish the James a number of times with Rob England of Appalachian Bronzeback Adventures. You might think of this as the story of beauty and the bass. That's the beauty. And that's the bass. The storybook setting for all of this, the upper James River between Glasgow and Snowden. It's an absolutely epic, epically beautiful place to fish and kayak and canoe um, basically any time of the year, but especially as we're getting into the warmer months. Uh, it's, it's just beautiful coming down here. That is Rob England. He's a guide on the James, runs Appalachian Bronzeback Adventures. He says this stretch is remote, access is limited, and that means it's nearly untouched. And this, this floats what we commonly refer to as Balcony Falls. Uh, it's very remote. We've got national forest bordering the river. Uh, there's, there's very little development down here. Oh, it's gorgeous. Mountains rise above gorges. There are rock formations and flats and rapids and falls. And there 
there are the smallmouth bass. The James is ranked as the top smallmouth bass water in Virginia, and this stretch near Balcony Falls could be the best of the best. That's saying a lot considering the state is a smallmouth mecca. The James is a numbers fishery. Yeah, that's a little one. Yeah. That's okay, it's a fish. That's right. And trophy fishery. He's got a pretty fat belly there in a crankbait. And you get to catch those fish floating through a landscape that looks like it's right out of an impressionist painting. So yeah, beauty in the bass. One of the best fisheries in Virginia and one of the prettiest places in Virginia. Talk about living happily ever after. Another outstanding spring fishing location is South Holston Lake. It straddles the Virginia-Tennessee border between Bristol and Damascus. It's got a diverse fishery. Just ask Steve Owens and Alex McRickard of the DWR. Uh, there's a lot of angling opportunities uh, in, in South Holston Reservoir. Uh, you can fish for smallmouth bass, largemouth bass. You've got rainbow trout, brown trout, lake trout, uh, musky, walleye, yeah. um, Pretty black neat. crappie. Channel catfish, flathead catfish. So. A, whole, a whole variety of yeah. opportunity. We did get that one muskie today, which was neat. And then smallmouth fishery. Mm -hmm. As far as our still water opportunities go in Virginia, there aren't a ton of them. South Holston's one it, of the top. It's, it's probably one of the best, yeah. if not the best, smallmouth lake in the state of Virginia. Yeah, excellent opportunities. And then top on largemouth opportunities, mm -hmm. and then toothy critters like muskie, and then our. Um, our neighboring uh, agency, the Tennessee Wildlife Resource Agency, stocks lake trout, you were telling me. They do. They, yeah. uh, they stock lake trout and uh, rainbow trout, and, and we stock brown trout as part of a cooperative agreement. Yeah. Uh, we also tend to stock the walleye in, uh, in the South Holston as well as the black crappie. Awesome. So a whole yeah. variety of opportunity mm -hmm. out here. Different species to target during different times of the year and, and one of the most beautiful parts of the state down here in southwest Virginia. Right now is maybe the best time to target those South Holston walleyes as they run out of the lake and up the South Holston River. You can target those fish with jigs, soft plastics, and stick baits, as well as live bait. We have three local anglers competing at Pro Bass Fishing's highest levels. Yep, look at there, look at there guys. Oh my gosh, oh, a giant. It, that is a absolute pig. That was one that of them, David pig. Dudley of Lynchburg. He fishes the Major League Fishing Circuit. David Cash in an event earlier this month. He'll fish the MLF Bass Pro Shops Redcrest later this week down in Birmingham. John Cruz of Salem fishes the Bassmaster Elite Series. Now, John's looking to turn things around after finishing out of the money in the first two events of the year. Casey Reed of Bedford County fishes the Bassmaster Kayak Series. He is currently ranked 18th. Speaking of fishing kayaks, Wired2Fish.com is out with its rankings for best fishing kayaks, and it says the best overall is the Old Town Sportsman Big Water E-Pedal. Best pedal kayak, the Hobie Mirage Pro Angler. And for you folks who like to stay fast and mobile, Wired2Fish says the best throw-and-go kayak is the Jackson Bite FD. Turn into hunting, gobbler season's coming up, and not everybody has access to private land. So, if you're looking for a public land option, there are DWR wildlife management areas. Now, WMA sometimes get a bad knock, but like anything else, if you put in the work, there's usually going to be a payoff. There's a great variety of wildlife on our wildlife management areas. We use a variety of habitat management techniques, and if you spend a little bit of extra time scouting and getting used to the patterns of animals on public land, you can have great success. You may need to think about hunting at different days of the week or even different times of the day to maximize success, but with a little bit of work, there's game to be had. That was Steve Living. He's a Habitat Education Coordinator for the DWR. Spring Gobbler opens April 13th. With the weather getting warmer, you might be getting the itch to get out and plant. The Virginia Department of Conservation and Recreation wants you to consider planting native species if you're looking to dress up your yard. I took a trip down to the DCR Bald Knob Preserve in Franklin County, and I saw exactly why. We're at Bald Knob Natural Area Preserve in Franklin County. This is more than just a nature walk. Yeah, we're talking about uh, this here. This is a hunt for an invader. Oh, nobody planted this here. It spread from where it was planted ornamentally somewhere and has dispersed into the preserve where it's begun to invade the native forest. And so here 
The man doing the hunting is Ryan Clough. He's with the Virginia Department of Conservation and Recreation's Natural Heritage Program. His adversary is a tree-like shrub called privet, and the Bald Knob State Nature Preserve is his battleground. So we have this uh, mature parent privet here, and then all this regeneration of smaller shrubs around it, creating this dense thicket where really nothing except privet now grows. Privet threatens native plants in a number of ways. Privet blocks the light those natives need while sucking up the water and nutrients native plants depend on. Wipe out the privet and plants like the native trout lily can thrive. And down here on the ground, you can see some of the benefits of that is uh, a happy little population of a native wildflower called trout lily blooming here. So how did privet get here? It was imported from Asia as an ornamental plant and spread. Here, privet has no native herbivores, so no native insects or other animals that can effectively control the size of its population. That means it's up to folks like Ryan and volunteers to get the invader under control. And our approach has been uh, a treatment called the cut stump treatment. So essentially with that, what we do is we cut off the, the shrub close to the ground uh, with a saw and then immediately apply a small amount of concentrated herbicide to that stump. Uh, and that spreads to the roots and kills this shrub without harming any of the other plants nearby. So this is an, part of the uh, privet patch that we haven't treated yet. Uh, as you can see, uphill from that patch, we've got about five or six piles, uh, like the one you can see here, where the uh, cut stems from that cut stump treatment were piled uh, by volunteers. We still have a lot of work to do in restoring the health of the native ecosystems here at Bald Knob, uh, but we've made a, a good start. Wildlife managers also want you to keep it native and natural. they found when native species are planted, it actually helps local wildlife to thrive. Now, speaking of thriving, getting outdoors can help you do just that. It's good for the body, good for the soul, because it's a place you can find some calm. Now, in case you can't get out there anytime soon, we bring the outdoors to you. We call it 30 Seconds of Solitude. Here are the sounds of the waves lapping up on the beach on Assateague Island. That got things evened out for you folks. I know it did for me. Hey, on that note, time for me to say goodbye. Until next week, I'm George Noel from WFXR's Outdoors Bound. Good hunting and tight lines, y'all. You build the mountains in your dreams. You leave the world so you can breathe. Whoa. You walk on fields inside your mind. You cross the oceans and the skies. Whoa. Like you found a better way Don't fight them all What they say Just turn around and walk away But if you leave again Just take me there with you